Hello, welcome to Doatan, a weekly podcast that brings you human rights stories from around Myanmar. Brought to you by Frontier Myanmar in association with Foundation Hirondel. This week, we look at Myanmar's deepening economic crisis. Thousands of jobs have disappeared among the working poor, and the country's poverty rate is expected to increase sharply over the next year as companies react to political instability. This story was reported and produced by journalists at Frontier Myanmar. I don't even have a bicycle now, and I have to walk to work. Sometimes a friend of mine would pick me up and send me to work. Previously, I used to have two or three bicycles. When my friends are busy, I have to walk to work. That's Konang Win. Until mid-March, he was a chicken wholesaler at a market in Yangon's outer western Hlangtaya Township. After the junta's deadly March 14th crackdown on protesters there, which left more than 80 people dead, business dried up. He had to close his shop. Now he works for another wholesaler, making just 4,000 chad a day, about $2.50. To earn the full day's wage, he has to leave the informal settlement he and other laborers share in Hlangtaya in the dark of night and get to the market by 3 a.m. After the crackdown, the junta placed Hlangtaya under martial law. And with a nightly curfew from 10 p.m. to 4 a.m. in place, every time he goes to work, he fears he may be arrested. Though he braves the risk, Nang Wen says the money is still not enough to feed his family of six. His neighbors in the informal settlement are in similarly dire straits. He said about 1,800 households there have taken out loans to make ends meet and are now in debt. You know what I do? In the past, some people worked as carpenters and construction workers. Now, these businesses are closed. Some people have to mortgage their clothes to buy food. Some people in the squatter settlements have to eat only one meal a day. The majority of workers in the squatter settlement are motorcycle taxi drivers, stonemasons, and factory workers who had to endure long stretches of unemployment during the COVID-19 pandemic. Some jobs were just starting to return before the coup, but trade groups say nearly 200,000 garment and 300,000 construction workers have lost their jobs since February 1st. Many now rely on donated food at Buddhist monasteries to eat. Ma Onmar, a former garment worker in adjacent Shwepatar Township, returned to her rural hometown in Ayawadi region when she could no longer afford her rent. She used to make 5,300 chad a day, but the factory closed and the owner left town after the coup. She found a job at another factory, but it paid just 3,600 chad a day, and the nightly curfew prevented her from working overtime to earn more. Around the same time, her husband, a construction worker, who used to send money back to their families in Ayawadi, lost his job. In rural area, the cost of living is lower than Yangon. In Yangon, meals average about 2,000 jets per day for us. Here, it costs about 1,000 jets a day. It is convenient for us as the cost of living here is lower than Yangon. We don't need to buy rice for the time being. The instability and lack of trust in banks and institutions run by the military have pushed the value of the chat downward, while the cost of essential items is rising. Rice and other staple foods are up at least 5% across the country, and in remote areas even more, according to the World Food Program. In Kachin State, for example, the price of rice rose by 43%. Across the country, cooking oil is up 18% on average. In Kachin, it's up 32%, and in Yangon, 25%. The junta has run regular announcements in state media encouraging people to consume less oil, ostensibly for their health, but the worry over scarcity is clear. The price of fuel is also up 30% nationwide. The enduring economic effects of the COVID-19 pandemic on a country with already high rates of poverty are being compounded by the unfolding political crisis, making a desperate situation worse. 
The World Food Program estimates that 3.4 million more people will go hungry in the next six months in Myanmar, particularly in urban areas. It expects to triple the number of people it offers food assistance to, from 1.3 million to 3.3 million over the next few months. A Yangon pawnbroker we spoke to said people are increasingly coming in, pawning whatever they own, and not coming back for it. In the past, when it was convenient to live and eat, people mortgaged their property and redeemed it. Now they can no longer repay their debt. If you lose something and buy it back, you will not be able to afford it. People are starving now, and the economy is declining. Ten people came to the pawn shop in the past. Now only one came. Between 2005 and 2017, the number of people living in poverty was half than Myanmar, as market and political reforms were implemented, and military rule gave way to a partial democracy and a shared civilian military government. Those gains may now be wiped out entirely in less than a year. The UN Development Program projects that half the country will again be pushed below the national poverty level, living on or below 1,590 chad a day, or about a dollar, by 2022. The World Bank estimates that the country's economy will shrink by 10% this year. The Japanese Foreign Minister announced that the country will donate 4 million in emergency food aid to Myanmar. Because of the quote urgent need after the coup, residents in Hlaing Thaya say they have not seen any international aid yet. The local groups have come to donate food to them. Still, the junta has made it hard. Aid groups are wary of entering townships under martial law and having to leave their name with ward administrators that work for the junta. Donors will be beaten and arrested by junta forces. If they don't donate quietly to those in need, they would take donations if they found them. For now, Nangwen is living day to day, hoping things do not get even worse. We have enough income to buy food for one day. If we don't go outside due to the current political crisis, there will be no extra income for us. We hope you've enjoyed this edition of Doha Tan. This episode was reported and produced by journalists at Frontier Myanmar. You can listen to the podcast on Frontier's website, frontiermyanmar.net, or on Frontier's Facebook page. You can also find it on Doha Tan's Facebook, SoundCloud, or YouTube pages, and on iTunes. This project to support human rights reporting is a partnership between Frontier Myanmar and Foundation Hirondo. With the support of the Embassy of the Netherlands in Myanmar and the Swiss Agency for Development and Cooperation, thanks for staying with us.